In this session on the Getting Started with Plexus 2D, we will talk about the Structures mode. First, I will give a quick recap of the different modes that we have. And then what we can all do in Structures mode is how we can define our structures. We use points and lines to create these. And in this mode, we have a special toolbar, which we should highlight which all the options that we have to define the structures, the boundary conditions, loads, and even if we want to create soil elements where we do not want to use the borehole definition that we have discussed in the previous session. And finally, I will go a bit into importing geometry. So the Plexus 2D workflow in Plexus input uh, consists of five steps. We define the soil, the soil layers in soil mode. Then we go to structures mode to define structural elements, loads and boundary conditions. Then in the green modes where we first generate the finite element mesh, flow conditions mode and stage construction to set up the different phases that we want to analyze. Here we're going to talk about the structures mode. So now I'm going to start Plexus 2D and continue where we left off in the, from the previous session after creating our soils in the soil mode. So let's go to structures mode and you will notice that the user interface changes a little bit. The soil that we had in soil mode, they will be shown in a more transparent color so we can focus really on the structures definition. And what's different here is that our toolbar here changes. So if we go over the items, we have here the items to select a single entity or to select multiple entities where we can drag a square on the screen to select everything which is inside the square. We have options here to move a certain object or to create an array. So if you want to copy elements. And then you can see here all kinds of options to create our elements and our geometry and our structural elements that we need in our geotechnical finite element analysis. The first one is to create a point. And with the point, we can have different options to create a point or create a point together with a point load or with a point, point displacement or with a fixed end anchor. For lines, we can of course just create a line or with these associated features of a line so that we the line load, line displacement, line contraction. We want to create maybe structural elements as a plate, a geogrid, embedded beam row. For soil structure interaction, we can use the interface. Node to node anchor to create a spring between two points. Here we have the well and the drain that we can use in flow, to, flow problems. And when you can consider the thermal properties of the soil, we can also have the thermal boundaries here. And the added mass feature that we can use when you run a dynamic analysis to simulate reservoir water loads acting on the dam. The option to create polygons, soil polygons. So with this, we can draw soil elements here. So the soil polygon, uh, if we just quickly want to create a rectangle, uh, follow contour. This is something that you can follow the contour of existing soil bodies. The option to create a tunnel. And here we have special boundary condition options as to create a load, point load or line load or the added mass feature. Point displacement, line displacement, and line contraction that we can use to simulate formulas of a tunnel, for instance. Here we have structural elements. You can also see them. They come also in different menu options here, but here is the menu option only specific for structural elements as the fixed end anchor, plate, geogrid, embedded beam row, interfaces, and node to node anchors. Here we have hydraulic conditions, uh, the well to set up inflow or outflow for your flow analysis, a drain, or to create groundwater flow boundary conditions, for instance, if you want to apply a specific head on a boundary. Thermal options with thermal flow boundary conditions. Special option here for creating hinges between plate elements. 
The option here is to create interfaces on the boundary. You will only need this when you want to use free field elements for your dynamic analysis. Here we have the Import Geometry option. We have the Show Materials option. So this will show our material database. And finally, we have the Check Geometry option where we can utilize a check to, for any geometrical issues. Maybe you have drawn points cl too close together. With this option, you can have the program check this for you that they are not too close together. So let's construct our deep excavation model that we use here as the example case. In order to do that, of course, first we have to draw the retaining walls. So to create the plate, we have to draw it according to the coordinates as defined in the tutorial example. So we create plate, we go to the location, we go here to the coordinate of 40, 30. You can see it's also here from the mouse pointer. We go from 40 down to this embedment layer. And actually we're going to put this one meter inside this yellow layer. So that's one retaining wall. And we're going to also create one here. This is the creation of the geometry for our retaining walls. Now, in order to take proper soil structure interaction into account, we also will create interface elements around here. We can do that in two ways. We can here use the create interface option. And I'll do that and draw from here and then downward. You can see while I draw that actually the points here will be highlighted. So that means that I have the snapping options activated here. So uh, snap to object. And that means that I have good confidence that I actually will draw on these exact coordinates. We can also activate this and create this interface here by using the right mouse button. And we can say create. And we can say positive interface and a negative interface. The positive and negative interface are merely intended to show that we have interfaces on two sides of this line. And they do not have a real physical meaning. So having a positive or negative interface does not mean anything for the interface element itself. But it shows us at which side of the line this is. Now with our retaining wall, we also have different excavation levels. The first excavation level, I will use the grid coincides here with the layer boundary. So then I do not have to redraw again. But the second one will be located here at an elevation of 23. So I can here click here. And then I could also click here in order to do that. But maybe I just want to use the command line. And you can see all the way at the bottom, we also have an option to type here. So I use opening brackets, two coordinates separated by a space and then close the bracket and then click enter. And there we have the line. And the final excavation level will be located at 20. So these are our excavation levels. And of course, we're not ready. We have to assign a material to our retaining walls. As you can see here in our Connecting Explorer, there's no material assigned. From our database, apart from soil and interface, we also have structural data sets, plates, geogrids, embedded beam row and anchors. So in this case, I'll use the plate and I will assign those here. And as you can see, they directly get a different color. It also implies that we have assigned a material data set. Without any additional support, this retaining wall will not be stable during excavation. So in this case, we're going to create tiebacks. In order to create a tieback, we will use a combination of a node-to-node -node anchor and an embedded beam row. The node-to-node -node anchor will serve as the unbonded length and the embedded beam row will serve as the bonded length of the ground anchor. So to create this one, we will first create a node-to-node -node anchor. So here we do create node-to-node -node anchor. And we're going to start from this location here, where we actually have the first location of the ground anchor. We start here at this 
40, 27, and we go to 31, 21. And here we go. So here we have the unbounded length, and the next part is we're going to use the embedded beam row, and we're going to create here a bonded part, which goes here to 28.19. In order to construct a proper ground anchor, um, of course, we have to take care and make sure that the unbonded length and the bonded length are properly connected. And in this case, actually, that means for the bonded part, we must make sure that we do not select the behavior of pile, but we'll choose ground body. That means that here, the proper interaction with the surrounding soil will be set. So this is one of the ground anchors. Now we can create the second ground anchor and redraw this one. But in this case, I just want to make a copy of this one. So I select both the elements. I choose create array. And then I want to create this one, a rectangular one. I want to make one copy. I want to have it in vertical direction. And the distance of this should be four meters lower. So I set here the distance between columns is minus four. I have two columns, so as the program says, the original object will be kept and one copy will be added. I click OK, and you can see it's created here a copy of this anchor row. So this is a very easy way to quickly recreate things that have certain inclination. So we will do the same at the other side. First create the node to node anchor for the unbonded part. Two sixty nine twenty one. Then I want to create the embedded beam row from this point. And you can see I can click and snap to this one. That that makes things very easy. And then we go to the location. Again, make sure that we do not have a behavior of pile. You can see also that the uh, that we get a small square there, indicating that there will be a rigid node connection with the sur uh, surrounding mesh. But of course, in this case, for crowd anchors, we do not want to have this. Again, we do this one, and we can two columns, minus four. OK. And there we have it. As you see, the structural elements are still having a very light color. That means we still have to assign the materials. So we can select them all. As you can see here in the Selection Explorer, we have this node to node anchor selected. And in this case, I want to assign an anchor, which I already predefined in the material database. And we can also here select these items. But in this case, I will use a right mouse click and I will say embed beam row, set material, grout. And you can see the color changes and all the materials are now assigned. Apart from that, we also want to get the surface load here on top. In order to do so, we can use the create line load. And in this case, I'm going to select this one here. I set it from 28.30 to 38.30. And this will be our working load for the equipment, which is located next to our deep excavation. And as you can see, after creating it, the Selection Explorer will actually, it's not only a line, but it also gives you a line load property here. And I'm going to set this for the static part. I'm going to set this to a vertical load downward of 20 kN per meter per meter out of plane. So here we can have our geometry that we can use for our model. One important thing that we have to think about are the boundary conditions for deformation. You can imagine if we would not set any boundary condition at the bottom, uh, no restriction, that means once gravity will be activated that our model will start to be pulled down by gravity. If there's no boundary condition, there's of course no boundary that can prevent the settlements there. So in that case, we have to apply boundary conditions. If you have a model 
which has a rectangular shape like this. That means that the bottom is horizontal and we are let to lateral side, so the left and right hand side of the model are vertical. Plexus will automatically apply boundary conditions and those boundary conditions are that the bottom is fully fixed and the lateral sides will not have any lateral deformation. So that means there's no horizontal deformation on the boundaries, but only possibility of vertical displacements. So that's taken care by the automatic boundary conditions. In some cases you do not want to do that. In that case, please use the prescribed displacement option to overcome that so that you can manually set the boundary conditions using this prescribed line displacement. And then you can actually fix the boundary condition for any line that's available in the model. In some cases, you might want to create your soil layers manually. Think about strong stratification um, or very complex layering, which a simple borrow cannot represent. In that case, we can manually draw our jo uh, soil geometry using the great soil polygon. And what we can do with here, we just select the soil polygon and here we can quickly, for instance, create a small embankment next to our deep excavation. And you can see it's directly created. And if we want, we can also assign a soil material to it. In this case, we will not use the soil body next to our excavation. So I'm going to remove it. So this concludes the geometry creation for the model. So now we're going to go to the next mode, the mesh mode, and we'll do this in the next session.